This is your 420 Radio News for Wednesday, April 24th, 2013. I'm Russ Belville. Alabama Senate approves welfare drug testing from WIAT. The Alabama Senate has approved legislation providing for drug testing of welfare recipients suspected of using illegal drugs. The Republican leader of the Senate, Del Marsh, moved to pass the bill while all the Democrats were out of the Senate chamber Tuesday afternoon. He also asked to have it passed using the roll call from a previously passed bill. No one objected, and the bill automatically passed 22 to 10. Democrats opposed to the bill rushed to the chamber to complain about Marsh using a quick procedural move. Marsh says they should have been in the chamber when the vote was to be taken place. Minnesota welfare drug testing debate prompts House members to vote for testing themselves. This from HuffingtonPost.com. The Associated Press reports that the Minnesota House was immersed in a long, winding, long debate about how to finance the state's upcoming health and human services budget. Among the 87 amendments on the table was drug testing for welfare recipients, the Minneapolis Star Tribune adds. According to the AP, after a Republican made that proposal, one Democrat suggested House members be part of that process, moving for salary and benefits to be tied to successful completion of a drug test. GOP members did not balk at that bet, with a House majority voting to add both measures to the larger $7 billion bill that was passed, 70 to 64. Bring on the cup, State Representative Dwayne Quam, Republican of Byron, told the AP. I have nothing to fear. <laughs> North Carolina Senate blocks testing themselves when passing welfare drug testing bill. From rawstory.com. Republicans in the North Carolina State Senate on Monday pushed through a bill that would strip public benefits like food stamps and job training for people who fail a drug test. In a 35 to 15 vote largely along party lines, senators passed SB 594. A single Democrat voted for the bill and no Republicans voted against it. The bill requires those applying for benefits to pay for their own drug tests. Applicants who test negative would be eligible to have the cost of their tests reimbursed. The policy could cost the state more than $2.1 million. At the same time, senators rejected an amendment offered by a Democratic state senator that would have drug tested the lawmakers, the governor, and cabinet secretaries. <laughs> lawmakers want to ban certain medical marijuana products from Boston Magazine. In Massachusetts, some state officials are trying to keep certain pot-infused products from hitting the shelves once dispensaries start popping up around the state. State Representative Peter Durant, Republican of Spencer, managed to slip in an amendment that would bar the manufacturing, packaging, and sale of marijuana and synthetic marijuana products that are similar to snacks and foods that are popular on the market, and in some cases specifically target kids. During a presentation at the budgetary hearing, Durant used posters of products like Pot Tarts and Munchy Ways that push the products to the consumers. Phoenix's first medical marijuana dispensary from, opens from myfoxphoenix.com. The first licensed medical marijuana dispensary in Phoenix will serve its first customers on Wednesday. Bloom Sky Train had originally planned to begin serving customers on Saturday, but a computer server run by Arizona's Department of Health Services was down, and they were unable to sell anything. This is followed up from azstarnet.com. A study shows medical marijuana will create about 1,500 jobs in Arizona, according to a new industry-sponsored study. Tim Hogan, an ASU research associate who authored the study, used information from Oregon's established medical marijuana industry to estimate the size of Arizona's fledgling market. Hogan found that the industry had the potential to create not only 1,500 direct jobs for marijuana growers and dispensary employees, but also up to 5,000 indirect jobs at places like grocery stores. Arizona has approximately 38,000 medical marijuana cardholders and has allowed 126 dispensaries, a percentage of the state's operating pharmacies. Only a handful are open now. Legal marijuana law jeopardizes all pot prosecutions from Como News. Prosecutors and crime lab scientists say a little-known provision in Washington's new law legalizing recreational marijuana has jeopardized their ability to go after any pot crimes at all, and they're calling for an immediate fix in the legislature. Part of the problem is from the law meant to distinguish marijuana from industrial hemp, which is grown from its fiber. The law defines marijuana as having more than 0.3% of THC. Scientists with the state crime lab say often, even potent marijuana can have less than 0.3% THC. It's only when it's heated or burned that another compound, THC acid, turns into Delta 9 THC and the pot achieves its full potency. This has been your 420 Radio News for Wednesday, April 24th, 2013. 
I'm Russ Belville. When we come back, we go behind the headlines for breaking news from Idaho, where the children of three of Idaho's top marijuana activists have been seized by Child Protective Services. They're raising money for their legal expenses. We'll tell you all about it when we come back.